Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to Border City Rock Talk, where you get great news, great interviews, great interviewees, and sometimes a comedic touch. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss these great interviews. Today I've got from Paradise Kitty, Jenna, and Rachel. How are you doing, ladies? Hey, doing great. I'd interviewed uh, Jenna and Rachel before uh, my channel started to get um, noticed. Now that we're there, I brought them back on. And I just want to let the, well, everybody obviously will know that these are the uh, two girls that founded Paradise Kitty, the world's premier Guns N' Roses tribute band. And just wondering what you uh, girls are doing now and what shows you have lined up. Uh, we have a lot coming up for 2023. Uh, we haven't announced officially on our page, but I know that the promoters have announced over there. We're going back down under in Australia at the end of March. It's going to be fantastic. Wow. How many yeah. uh, How many shows are you doing down there? Is, uh, well, obviously, Seven. you're going down there, you're going to do across the country, but... Seven. Uh, Seven. Seven. Okay. So you guys just... Can you guys uh, hear me? Can you guys hear me? Yeah, we can hear you, uh, Rach. So you uh, you just got back from uh, Australia not too long ago. Tell us about that experience. Well, we were we in Australia. We, we got to cuddle koalas and play with kangaroos, and that was amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All of us girls are huge animal lovers, so... You know, an opportunity like going to Australia meant uh, we went to a lot of the nature preserves there because that was important to us and a lot of fun. So, um, yeah, we, we do fun stuff like that any chance we get. But I got to say, the fans down under, they know how to rock. They really bring a party. So it was a lot of fun last time, and we're really looking forward to going back. Um, yeah, and we were there We were there back in 2018, so it's going to be – it's been a minute, and we're looking forward to seeing all those faces we haven't seen that. A lot of those people that we've that we've known through like through the Monsters of Rock cruises were a lot of uh, Aussies down there. We haven't seen them since then, so it's gonna be it's gonna be a nice reunion with some of our down under family. That's awesome. And this funny thing you brought up, uh, Rachel, um, about the koalas. I was in the car the other day and I was listening to I don't know one of those, you know, the, the guy and the girl team that you know announced the songs and they do the ad lib between. And the girl was talking about a koala, and apparently they're vicious. They, they are not very social animals, so they, <laughs> they do not like to be held and touched and pet, and like that, that's not something that they favor. But, you know, something that we learned about koalas that was very interesting is I think there's 50 different subtypes of eucalyptus, because that's all they eat is eucalyptus. Right. And it's really hard when they get displaced, because if they grew up eating a certain, like, one or two types of eucalyptus, they won't eat any other type. So it's it's a challenge to figure out, like, you know, if there's a fire and they get displaced or something happens, you know, modern world encroaches on their habitat. Um, it's it's hard to take care of them because they are singular in their taste for eucalyptus. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, it is crazy. And it's great how you segued me to something me and Jenna were talking about. It's just a lot, just like us human animals. Um, for me, going to Canada or from you ladies going from California to India, you drink the water there. It's you not, don't drink the water there. Yeah. You don't drink the water. The water. <laughs> yeah, you're like the koala. You don't get along with the, the, the water that's not habitat to your local systems. Yeah. Delhi belly yeah, is true. real in India. Delhi belly is real. I testify. Not fun. <laughs> <laughs> so when you were in India before, uh, Jenna, tell us about um, why you were there when you guys went to India. We went toward India last summer in June, and we were there for the Let Women Do the Talking Conference, which was a conference gauged in bringing women into the music industry and showing them that they too are a part of this industry that's growing, thriving. And over there, uh, and we get a lot of questions from the fans over there about safety concerns and stuff like that because there, it's a uh, it has, it's been seen as women for a longer time were more second class citizens. I mean, they've been that way all out, all throughout the world. We've all been, we're still fighting for our rights over here in America, guys. So um, it's a, it was something that they were really concerned about. And they're uh, a thriving country, a country starting to thrive and grow both technologically and politically and um, 
and also progressively mindset. So there were a lot of women there that were interested in learning about becoming a musician, becoming an engineer, becoming a producer, uh, running, running concerts, being concert promoters and stuff. And it was a, every, every um, city that we did, we did three days there where there was one day we got to see the city. The next day was the conference. And then the day after that was our concerts. And the crowds there were amazing. The women there were amazing and engaging and want to know, want to like be a part of the business. And so we were there to show them that they can be. That's great. And there's actually a Canadian that's living out in Cali, Priya Panda. Oh, yeah. I love Priya. And she's yeah. Indian Heritage, and she's one of she's a great rocker for sure. Yes, she's amazing. Well, it's 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 not about a question of whether women can or can't. It's just really changing the dialogue of making it more socially acceptable in a very conservative area, basically. Right. Yeah. You know, a lot a lot of India is is still religiously very conservative. Yeah. And so it's it's um, you know culturally not acceptable for a woman to go out alone at night and play rock and roll in a wild club. Mm -hmm. you know so it's just kind of change, changing that dialogue and opening the dialogue and and helping you know helping you know just give the women there a little bit of love and support if they want to be in the business whether as an artist or on the industry side mm -hmm. and um you know just just bringing it to the forefront as a more acceptable career for women there basically yeah. right and, and that goes um with not not uh, without saying uh, or around the world and everything i'm noticing right now there's a lot of more a lot more women that are coming to the forefront in the industry you know especially in bass playing you've got tanya with white snake bethany um with the grand bonnet band i'm seeing it more and more and i'm like thinking why wasn't it before huh. i think i over? think that before there wasn't as many I mean, I, I, I mean, Jenna, I think for you, the, the experience might be slightly different as a female singer growing up, but yeah. as a drummer, for me growing up, there wasn't many female role models to look up to. It just wasn't as acceptable for a girl, a feminine, pretty woman to get out there and hit things. It just not, you know, people are like, you want to do that? Why? You know, I hate to tell you how many times people have asked me like, oh, you're a musician. That's cute. Do you sing? No, I don't really sing. Oh, then you, you must you must play bass. No. Well, acoustic guitar, like, uh, you know, Lilith Fair kind of thing. No, 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 no none of the above. I'm the drum. No, what do you do then? He's always saying, well, then what? Yeah. Then, then what? Well, I play drum. Even, even, even me as a singer. Even me as a singer. Just to finish saying what I was trying to say, there, there wasn't a lot of female role models, but now there's a lot more. And with social media and with, you know, all this stuff, you start to see a lot of girls out there rocking their butts off. And I think the young girls, it inspires them to pick up an instrument and play because it just seems like, oh, that's something that I can do and it's acceptable and it's not going to be a force I'm going to have to blaze a trail through, you know? Yeah. And sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, Rach. Because it's okay. Um, yeah, I mean, even, me, even me as a singer, man, like, it, it was a, uh, so what do you sound like? Do you sound like Pat Benatar? Or do you sound like Deborah Harry? Or do I sound like Evanescence? I have like three people coming up in Hollywood that they're, this is what you sound like, you know? And because that was the only three rock women singers that people knew. So I think now, like, especially with the invention of social media and other girls seeing that there are other women playing, it allowed them to feel comfortable and asking, so hey, mom, for Christmas, I want a guitar. Hey, mom, for Christmas, I want a set of drums because I'm seeing other people there every day doing this. And I think women spend about 20% more, they said, on social media and not just, not just like scrolling, but commenting and engaging. And so seeing those women there playing guitars and having them talk back to you and tell them, yeah, it's totally cool, man. I love my life. I love expressing myself. It's given it a different boost to kick other girls into gear and wanting to perform and wanting to take a hold and even just being a producer, stuff like that. It's amazing. Right. Right. So let's go into a little bit of a history on when you guys formed and your interactions with members of uh, Guns N' Roses. I know the last time we chatted, you told me um, there's a couple members that, you know, just said you guys were fantastic. So just, just give the audience here that hasn't seen that interview, a brief history of the band when you started what made you start? What made you do Guns N' Roses? And your interaction with um, the Guns N' Roses uh, members? 
You want me to take this, Jenna? Yeah, go for it. Um, so basically we started the band on an idea from a mutual friend that was like, Hey, do you want to do this? And we both said, sure. Why not? I knew that the reunion was going to be happening before it was announced. So I thought it was a really good time for it. And they're really fun songs to play. So the band got going and, um, you know, it's the music industry is a small business and you cross paths with most everyone at some point in time or another. And my path has crossed with the Guns N' Roses camp numerous reasons and times over the years and um you know a mutual friend of axel's had told him about us before we had our first show and at first he was like girls doing guns and roses do they think i sound like a girl does it you know he was kind of a little weary and then um we did our first show we did like a test show out in the desert and he googled video of it and liked it and started tweeting about us which was great mm. um all the members of flash's band are old friends and so they've obviously told Slash all about us and he always watches videos and loves it and has our t-shirts and he's super supportive and, and that's great. And I know Duff's heard about us and he thinks it's cool. And, you know, it's just, we didn't want to do this project um, unless they gave us their seal of approval. These are their songs. This is their artwork. These are their children that they birthed and raised and dressed and put through school, basically. So, you know, we, we just respectfully didn't want to do this project unless they were cool with it. And luckily we have communal friends and, you know, scenarios and, uh, and they all, they all love it and are super supportive and super cool. Steven Adler's a sweetheart. You know, my old band used to tour with him from time to time. So at some point we'll get him to come sit in and play with us when the stars align and you know, maybe one day Slash will come play with us. We've invited him a few times. It just never lined up. Mm. But, um, you know, they, they've, they've all been super supportive. We've also done quite a bit of touring with Dizzy Reed's side project, Hookers and Blow. Right. And uh, that's always fun, you know, because, like, he'll do all the piano songs. We'll do all the non-piano songs, and we'll sit in with him. And, you know, we, we, we'll all play together, and that's, that's always a blast. You know, Jenna will get yeah. up and sing with him, and, and we'll all jump up and, and play a couple songs with them. And it's, it's just fun. So... Is there a certain song, Jenna, that um, you look forward to singing in the set list? Uh, I always, my favorite for us to play is You Could Be Mine. I, I love that song. I think I think I kind of imprint on that more than I do so the um, the Appetite, the yeah. Appetite album. Though I, that's one of my favorite albums of all time. It's just because I remember like vividly as a kid watching MTV at that time. Yeah. And being like, man, that's fucking cool and so that song and, and that the energy in that song is always just so embracing like I feel it in my stomach when that song comes I want to sing it I want to move I want to I want to the, the crowd goes nuts so that one's my favorite to do I like Rocket Queen for um just well everybody's got their own little DNA and why I like Rocket yeah. Queen but I love that song so I know that you guys have had a few different members in the band who's uh currently in the band Besides your, you guys originally. Oh, you know, we're, we're we're changing lineup a bit. You know, we have other girls that are our regulars that play and other big groups too. And so sometimes touring schedules cross. So we can't. I can't really give you a full straight lineup of what's going to happen okay. this coming year. But, um, we we yeah. love our kitties, and we always have a lot of them that we play with because we all love playing together. So you know, it's yeah. like we have we have our first text when we get a show offer to see who's available, and then we have all the backup girls, you know, okay. and um, and all of us interchange and move around and love playing together. It's just you know the only constant is Jenna and I, and other than that, all the other girls. It's like it depends on who's available because we have great players and they're all quite often very busy doing other things like Ariel's out on tour with Debbie Gibson right now. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. So th they're all, they're all busy girls that, that are working musicians. So, you know, unless we could support them full time, they have other things and we support them doing other things and we support them growing and spreading their wings and, you know, having other amazing experiences as a musician, you know, that's what we're all in this for. So, you know, it's like, we, we just have a nice little bevy of kittens that we, <laughs> we get to play with and it's awesome because they're all amazing and wonderful and you know and we all have like we have this wonderful family of a bunch of girls we aren't limited to just five so right. it's great <laughs> you'd be a big litter you never know right <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> throw, throw a ball of yarn in there and you never know what's gonna happen <laughs> uh, that's awesome um 
just actually a little segue here. I always do. I don't know why. I think segue is my most important word. But so I pick this picture behind me, Rachel, for this. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> That, got, that picture was in Australia. Is that where you got it? Was on, Australia? Yeah. Okay. That, that picture was in Australia on Manly Beach, and we decided we had to try zombies. So we were drinking zombies, staring at the ocean on Manly Beach in Australia. Wow. Well, you look happy. So, I mean, it must have been a great view. <laughs> <laughs> well, there were quite, a, there were quite <laughs> a, 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 a good view to look at. Oh, okay. We, we had okay. a day off. And Jenna and I love to explore and go to like a historical site or just, you know, we like to go, we like to be tourists when we travel. Like what, part of the reason why I do this is to see the world with my best friends. Right. So um, we had a day off and we took from where we were staying in, in Sydney, we took um, like the bus line ended up being like a water taxi. And so we got to jump on a ferry and go to Manly beach and walk around. Cause we were told Manly was like cleaner and nicer than Bondi beach. And so, um, we went down to Manly Beach, and it was a little chilly that day, so we didn't, like, get in the water or anything. But we walked around, and we had some zombies, and we had a wonderful lunch and poked around and did some shopping, and it was fun. Got on the yeah, got on the great. ferry and rode back and dropped us off right at the, the Sydney Opera House. We got some fun pictures. And oh, no. um, then I think we went to a jazz club that night, Jenna. Was that the jazz club <laughs> night? I think that was the jazz club night. <laughs> night. Jen and I had a night that night. That was a, that, that's a story I'm sure that you'll keep between the two of you. But. It, it's a story that I wish I remembered all of. <laughs> you should have had a GoPro on each of your other's head. Each other's head. Well, then we wouldn't have had the drink spot for us. Oh, they, they, yeah. may, they, may have, they may have arrested us at customs if we had a GoPro on us. <laughs> true enough. True enough. Okay, so I, I have a faint recollection of a Christopher Walken picture in her bathroom that I tried putting in my purse. I don't. I mean, I have that like, picture. Hey, my favorite actor. This should come home with us. <laughs> I love Christopher Walken. He's great. Um, before I let you go, so I know you guys have the big tour down under. Um, and Jenna was saying um, with Biggie and stuff, you guys have some things in the works, but you're not announcing it. So there's a good chance you're going to be doing some North American shows um, sometime Absolutely. in 2023. We have some oh, yeah. wonderful stuff in the books. We just can't talk about it yet. So we we uh, have things booked all the way till September right now. We have things salt and peppered through September. I'm sure we'll fill in more dates. It's just a lot of those aren't announced yet. So we can't we can't tell you until it's time. Okay. Well, perfect. Um, before I let you go, I just have to announce uh, Sibel from, I think, Sao Paulo. She won the Border City Rock Talk mug when I um, hit my 500 subscriber. So I'll send that out to her. Uh, the next one is 750. So everybody subscribe. And uh, I'll put all the names in the hat. And I'll send you a Border City Rock Talk mug, which I think I have here. And I don't know if you can see it, but there it is. Uh, awesome. Can, can we congratulate Sibel down in Sao Paulo? So yeah, we got that. So, we want to come to Sao Paulo. We want to. We want to do Brazil. Yeah, South America be a great uh, angle to come do the um, down under, and then come on back up through South America. That'd be great too. So talk to your manager. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Um, what's the opposite of unsubscribe? I know you guys are very intelligent ladies, so I won't uh, take me more than one time to ask. The opposite of unsubscribe. Subscribe. All right, ladies. Hey, do as Jenna and Rachel from Paradise Kitty says and subscribe to the channel where you get great news and interviews just like this and great interviewees with sometimes a comedic touch. Um, Once again, ladies, I'd uh, like to thank you. Oh, and where would everybody go to uh, find out what you guys are doing? What's what's your website? Check us out at paradisekittyband.com. It'll have all the updates for you. Facebook, Instagram, and everything, Twitter. It's all on there. it's, uh, It's all on there. All right. And and you you don't have to pay for a subscription. It's not like OnlyFans. <laughs> <laughs> not well, only are you guys talented and beautiful, but you're generous. <laughs> oh, well, you know, we do we do what we can to keep the population happy. <laughs> happy people is a happy life. All right. Thanks, girls. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.